Hello and thanks for joining us on the Meet the News on TVC. Um, we are staying with the Great Britain, a nation in mourning after the death of Queen Elizabeth II, the longest reigning monarch in the United Kingdom's history. She died on Thursday, age 96, with her son Charles succeeding her as king. Buckingham Palace announced shortly after 6.30 p.m. Thursday that the monarch had died peacefully at her summer home, Balmoral, in Scotland. Her son and heir has ascended the throne and will be known as King Charles III. His wife, Camilla, is the Queen Consort. The Union Jack is flying at half-mast and a 10-day period of mourning has been announced. Now, royal palaces in London, Windsor and Balmoral have seen huge numbers of people laying flowers and expressing their sadness at the passing of a much-loved queen who was on the throne since 1952. Large crowds are thronging the Buckingham Palace and other royal residences, causing delays to some public transport. According to a statement from the Cabinet Office, access to some areas, especially in central London, will be restricted with road closures and diversions that will cause delays to vehicles and pedestrians as planning for the state funeral and related events gets underway. It asks for floral tributes to be placed, to be placed only in designated areas near royal residences in London, Windsor, Edinburgh, Balmoral and Sandringham. Mourners around the world are paying tribute to Queen Elizabeth II by laying flowers and leaving messages at embassies and cathedrals as world leaders continue to send in their condolences. In the words of British Prime Minister Liz Truss, Truss it's, quote, the passing of the second Elizabethan age, end quote. Well, for President Joe Biden, the 96-year-old monarch charmed everyone with her wit, moved with her kindness. French President Emmanuel Macron says the Queen will be remembered as a friend of France and a kind-hearted Queen. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz also paid tribute to the longest seven monarch. In his words, she will be missed, not least her wonderful humour. Her service to Canadians was also acknowledged by Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Pierre Trudeau says her efforts will forever remain an important part of the country's history. Labour leaders say... The Queen's life or service will be treasured. Well, Nigeria's President Muhammadu Buhari has commiserated with the royal family and the people of the United Kingdom, the entire Commonwealth nation and the entire world in mourning the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. He also welcomed the ascension of King Charles III to the throne in line with tradition and prayed he witnessed the continuing robust and sisterly relations between the two nations. Well, former President Goodluck Jonathan described the late Queen of England as a champion of social change and a protagonist of modern Britain. In a series of tweets on his official Twitter handle, the former president said Queen Elizabeth was a well-loved sovereign. The presidential candidate of the Progressive Congress, Bola Tinubu, in a statement said, quote, with the sad passing of Queen Elizabeth II, the United Kingdom has lost one of its greatest ever monarch, and the world has lost a much cherished, revered, and admired icon. Former Vice President and the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Ajiko Abubakar, in a statement, described the monarch's passing as an end of a golden era. He described her reign as epochal, not just in the United Kingdom, but the entire Commonwealth. All right, joining us to talk about the passing of Queen Elizabeth II is international affairs analyst Paul Ejime. He joins us to discuss uh, this. Uh, thank you for joining us on the news. Thank you for having me and um, our condolences and commiseration to the uh, royal family, uh, mm -hmm. British um, people and um, the whole world as um, they mourn um, uh, the Queen who uh, touched uh, many lives. Right. Now, when she was being crowned the Queen, she made a statement that uh, whether her life was long or short, she was ready to dedicate her life to service. How would you evaluate her reign? So, well, that statement um, resonated with the fact that um, at 96, um, she didn't want to... Um, 
leave the office or have the, have the kids. You know, the uncle, um, Edward the Eighth uh, had abdicated. That was why the father um, uh, George the um, Assist um, uh, took over. And uh, it was at the death of uh, the father that um, she ascended the throne at age, very young age of 25, and has seen it through now for 70 years. Um, got married to uh, Prince Philip, and um, who died uh, fortunately last year. Um, so they were married for 73 years. So she, this is a woman with history and has uh, come in those, I think many um, Britons will not, um, they didn't know any other uh, monarch in their lives, in their lifetime. And even the world, uh, like your report says, they had visited um, um, all the Commonwealth uh, countries at least once. There are 56 of them, and um, they are, um, you know, they constitute about um, one third of the world. So um, she has uh, uh, lived a, a good life. Um, Chief Anyoku, for instance, the former Commonwealth uh, Secretary General of Nigeria, had, um, you know, described her as a symbol of uh, dignity. Others have talked to her about her as um, a kind-hearted woman. And, um, of course, Many will also remember the slave trade that uh, the royal, the, the uh, royalty uh, monarchy had uh, a very solid hand in it. Um, you know, they had uh, um, their uh, plantations where slaves walked. But that is the, the kind of checkered history that um, the monarchy that um, uh, uh, Queen Elizabeth II that represented had come. A, a checkered history of uh, the good, the bad, the ugly. But um, people will also remember that uh, she is um, a steady in hand, a stabilizer. The Nigerian military has denied involvement in crude oil theft amid official figures indicating Nigeria loses about 400,000 barrels daily. The army also says troops recover 2 million and 70,000 litres of crude oil and other petroleum products in the last two weeks. Sifon Yassian has details. He started out with an update on operations carried out by troops across the various theaters. The operations against oil thieves and economic saboteurs generated a lot of interest in the wake of the official figure indicating the country loses 400,000 barrels of crude to oil theft daily. Troops also recovered 270,000, 2 million, 700,000 liters of crude oil, 706,000 liters of automotive uh, gas oil, 15,500 liters of dual purpose kerosene, 67,000 liters of premium motor spirit, 8 trucks, 3 pumping machines, 3 outbox engines, and 3 generators. With the figures that we are reeled out here, as far as the number of uh, crude oil uh, that has been recovered, HEO and the rest of them, you know, with all these difficulties, we are doing our possible best. But beyond the losses, which are part of a larger security challenge in the country, the use of combat forces in tackling the challenge is just a fraction of the solution. The Nigerian military authorities say much as successes have been recorded in the renewed offensive across the various theaters, that only poses about 20%, a fraction of what is required to bring about sustainable peace in the country. Sifon Asian, TVC News, Abuja. And in under states, members of the amalgamated unions of foodstuff and cattle dealers have backed the decisions of Amotekun Corps to return illegal invaders to their states. Led by its national president of the association, Mohammed Tahir, the group said moving a large number of people with cows to the state should not be tolerated. Mr. Tahir said the association is ready to partner government in whatever way to make the state and country safe for all citizens. Why you see us that when we arrest them like that, we look for vehicle and we take them back to you is that the governor knows that they are Nigerians and that they are from somewhere. So since they don't know where they are going, 
they should know where they are coming from. On those days, we are not against Ausa or Fulani. We have been living together for long. But there is a law here that will not allow a Yoruba man to spoil your goods. That same law will not allow Ausa Fulani man to spoil Yoruba man. We know what is happening in this country today. Kenakit, Bandim, and Robin, High Killer, and this in this country. So we are very appreciative for your effort because this your state number one piece in this criminality. We hear uh, we we are, we are hear the information to what you are uh, you are team is doing because you are against the criminal kidnapping and other any criminality so this is we are very happy we are very appreciative for your effort no fewer than five persons were injured when a building under construction collapsed in ibado residents say the building went down at about 5 30 a.m on thursday olaide uyewali has details it is less than one week after a seven-story building in lekki area of lagos collapsed and led to the death of six persons. This time around, another building under construction went down in Ibadan, or your state capital. According to eyewitnesses, this is not the first time the building would collapse, as there are speculations that the persistent collapsing of the building must have been because of the substandard materials used in the construction of the building. Ah, this thing, early morning, we don't know what is happening. Just like that, we see building fall around 5.30 in the morning. So we nearly run, we run safe, we run leave the area because we don't know what is happening. We just hear falling down in the morning. A building at number 28 Aulawa Road uh, Avenue going on uh, for construction for remodeling or either their innovation. But we discovered that suddenly overnight in this morning the building collapsed. And uh, according to information we gathered, about five people were injured and they are now receiving treatment at uh, UC. So An official of the Standards Organization of Nigeria said it was observed that contractors handling the construction of the building compromised standards. I discovered that the builder, either the, the contractors, are not too competent. Uh, from just one observation that I saw, I saw one pillar there. This pillar have almost about uh, three size of iron rod inside. The three iron rods that I saw that they mix together can then be of a good quality. Hmm? But because they are not so very prudent in their own uh, uh, calculation and then they are just think that they can just use any iron rod and then try to reduce the cost, they mix it together. And at the same time, as they two use the, top, I mean, the, the, four, the four iron rod, eventually by the time I look at the top, you discover that they have even, they talk, I mean, the four pillar, I mean, the four rods have become two. Relevant agencies present at the scene said, preventive measures would be put in place to forestall future occurrence. Olaidio Yewali, TVC News, Ibado. Controversies have continued to trail the removal of Adamawa State Chairman of uh, the All Progressives Congress over alleged anti-party activities and financial misconduct. His removal has uh, polarized stakeholders with divergent interests now emerging. Correspondent Olabi Adenusi filed in this report. The lingering crisis rocking the Adamawa State chapter of the All Progressive Congress has now deepened over the impeachment of the state chairman by 25 members of the state executive committee. The fallout of the party gubernatorial primaries pitch major stakeholders against each other with a litigation challenging the election result which they allege was highly monetized. Some stakeholders in an interview with TVC News described the chairman's removal by the initiator as ill-motivated and for personal gains. They allege that the chairman's removal was sponsored by the ruling People's Democratic Party in the state to give home-based support for its presidential candidate. 
there are forces who are who doesn't want that Muslim, to Muslim against the Muslim Muslim ticket that are the ones that are funding this thing through the opposition so that the party will be scattered and we, they will make sure that Tinibu did not win Adamawa State, especially. He, he didn't get two, uh, even 25%. Actually, directly or indirectly, this, this action will going to affect our party, will also going to affect our, 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 our outcome. I don't think it is very good. Those on the other side insist that its removal will help the party to put its house in order towards the 2023 general election. Some people may be thinking maybe we are embroiled in crisis, uh, maybe not a uh, few months to the elections. We, we, but we should understand that we have six months to regroup, to work very hard uh, so that uh, uh, we win that election. He was the chairman in 2019. We lost the election too. So he has a pre-degree of, of losing elections. And removing him is the only way, is the surest way and the smartest way if you want to win 2019 elections. The Embattled Chairman described his removal as illegal and is confident that it will not stand. He insists that he remains the Chairman of APC in Adamawa State and that it is only the National Working Committee that has the power in a dispute or crisis to remove an elected Chairman of the party. Event watchers are in a hurry to know how APC will resolve the leadership crisis and work as a formidable house to win 2023 general elections in Adamawa State. The Men's Association of Nigeria has paid a familiarization visit to the presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Ashiwaju Bola Tidubu, at the Tinubu Shetima campaign office in Abuja. National President of the Association and Chairman of the Agricultural Commodity of Nigeria, Bill Abubakar Ano, who led members of the National Executive on a courtesy visit to the APC presidential flag bearer, says... The over 10 million members are ready to throw their weight behind Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu's presidential aspiration. He said the visit is for them to know the agricultural policy of the APC presidential candidate as it affects the Maize Association of Nigeria. The APC presidential candidate, however, assured them that his administration will cater for the need of farmers and ensure that a commodity exchange market is created. He said if elected, his administration will develop on the existing agricultural programs. As all community associations, as I have said, we have more than 17 community associations as a form. Uh, put them to commodity, put them together, let's talk change. I believe the commodity exchange is the liberator. Is that the yes. Yes. Yes.
is not for a loss. Out of it, they can have packages of conflicts. <coughs> What did they do to us? They explode. I, I guarantee you that. Uh, you know, in the campaign, there will be farmers' directorates uh, where we are and uh, we are going to coordinate with you. But uh, told you. No matter where you start, you see the sky.